Okay, so what does a PLC do? What are input field devices? What are output field devices? Then we connected it up to some hardware. And then we want to talk about letter logic diagrams, the programming itself, its origins. And I'll just tell you right up front, if you don't have a solid understanding of electricity, complete circuits, switching and loads, relay, relay contacts, you're, you're at a disadvantage. Now you may do fine, but you're always going to come up a little short. So we do have a number of videos that you can access to learn more about the origins, and we're going to do some of that in these little short presentations. So now we're going to do ladder logic diagrams. And a lot of people, people we'll say smart people, uh, fresh out of school, maybe not so fresh out of school, they look at this symbology of contacts and coils and they kind of stick their nose up at it and say, well, uh, be much better in C, C++, Visual Studio, and they name off some structured text languages. Now, originally, I learned BASIC long before I ever got involved with PLC. So I started with a, a form of structured text language. But when it comes to the speed at which you can program, the speed at which you can put your ideas into code, the speed at which you can read other people's code and troubleshoot when the process or the machine is down and your company is losing thousands of dollars per hour, it depends on how fast you can both analyze the code, correct it, make changes, whatever you need to do. I have a standing challenge out there. Anyone whose specialty is writing structured text code will take a processor machine, and when I say a machine, I mean a bang bang, clippity clop, step one, step two, assembly type machine. Real simple machine, and you, you write it in structured text, and I'll write it in ladder logic, and if I can't beat you at least twice as fast getting it programmed. And that, neither one of us knows what the machine is in advance. Okay, <laughs> we both start with a set of electrical prints. If I can't get it done twi at least twice as fast, you and me are going to risk uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse and I'm buying you a steak dinner. And then we'll troubleshoot it. In other words, we'll go out and, and commission on the machine. We'll have some unknown long-haired leaping gnome throw problems in it. You know, jamming parts and uh, dirty photo eye lenses, you name it. If I can't troubleshoot it five times faster than the person doing the structured text, I'll take their whole family to Ruth Chris Steakhouse for a steak dinner. Now this is not putting down structured text. I program with all four languages available, typically like with RS Logics 5000. You have function, block diagrams, sequential function ch charts, uh, structured text, and ladder logic diagrams. Now if I'm doing math, I probably am going to do it in structured text. And I'll have a routine or program that just does that and that's all. Just that mathematical expression. If I'm doing temperature control, some process control, I'm probably going to use function block diagrams. I seldom ever use sequential function charts other than in the course of training and showing people how to do them. However, the majority of the work out there is being done with ladder logic diagrams and if you can't read and analyze ladder logic diagrams quickly, you're probably not going to move very far ahead in your job because it's all about the install base folks, what's already out there running in the plant. When they hire somebody to work on this stuff, that's what they're hiring. They want somebody that can go out there with a laptop plug in, start communicating with it, looking at the code and analyze, oh, I got a photo eye that didn't come on. Now, some structured text, they do animate it. In other words, when you're looking at your text on the screen, it changes color based on whether it's on, off, but seldom can you pick out the true or false. That's the problem of uh, troubleshooting structured text versus ladder logic diagrams. And so those of you that are really hot on structured text, just hang in there, do your best with the ladder logic diagram and suffer the rest of us. 
This is a small piece of a electrical print from an industrial control system. If you don't know electricity now, you might want to stop, go watch a couple videos on basic electricity, and then come back. Go to PLC University Virtual Classrooms. The very first classroom is basic electricity and magnetism. This is a small piece of an electrical print. At the top, you see that we're connected to two terminals of a three-phase system. We have a step-down control transformer that gives us 120 volts. AC. The reason that we call this ladder logic is because the individual circuits, and there are four of them that are suspended, if you want, between 101 and 102. When you look at them from the 20 foot view, it looks like rungs on a ladder. Let's start with a real simple circuit an electric motor, and I'm um, taking a little license here. Typically a 480 volt AC motor would be a three phase motor. I have a switch that I can turn that motor on and off with. At 480 volts with any kind of a power motor, it's going to draw a lot of current and every time you open and close that switch, you're gonna see a lot of arcing and it's going to burn the contacts. However, let's say one day you have conditions that you want to complete in place before you run the motor, like three limit switches in your process and you want all three limit switches which is tripped, otherwise the motor doesn't run. Now you've got four contacts that have to be super heavy duty and handle high amp. We have a good solution for that, and that is not to have any more high voltage, high current contacts than necessary. Replace all of that with one contact, and that one contact is a heavy duty contact from a contactor, coil of which we're labeling CR, contact relay, and we've moved those four conditions down into a low voltage, 24 volt DC circuit, and now these four sets of contacts can be very small and lightweight. 150 milliamps is considerably less than 7 amps. The logic here is if all three limit switches are tripped and you have the switch on, then you energize CR that closes the big heavy duty contact and turns on the motor. Where do we find these circuits? Find them in a relay panel. And what's in a relay panel? Hundreds of relays. Each one of those brown rectangles represents a relay. On one end of the panel, there's a terminal strip that you mount your input devices to, your field devices. And on the other end of the relay panel, the output field devices. If we take a closer look at these I took the liberty to change the color from brown to yellow. The input field devices can be all different voltages, anywhere from 5 volts to 480 volts. The coils of those yellow relays have to match the field device voltage, the field wiring interface to the relay panel. And then consequently on the other end, those yellow relays, they're all going to have the same coil voltages as the brown relays, but the contacts on the right end for the output devices those contacts have to be able to handle the voltage and the current for the output devices. So let's connect up our input devices. We had a switch and we had three limit switches. And then we, these three items together energized something we called CR. A contact from CR through an output circuit turned on the motor. These relays all have a pair of contacts, normally open, normally closed. Let's take another example. Here's our field wiring. We have a pressure switch. That pressure switch operates on 115 volts AC in the field. It energizes a contact relay, CR1. On the output side of our, we have field wiring. We have 240 volts AC. Somewhere there's a relay, CR12, that will control this contact. And when this contact closes, it will energize that coil and will close three contacts that supply three phase power to the motor. And here's the logic for that relay CR12. We have six relays. We don't see the coils here. We're just grabbing one little chunk of relay logic, one field device, which is CR1, the pressure switch hydraulic reservoir. And that pressure switch closes when the hydraulic pressure is up to the set point. The other end of the field wiring, when we close the contact CR12, that runs the motor to pump the pressure up. Now that is a rung of ladder logic. These are also rungs of ladder logic, even though all three of these are different voltage. Each voltage in a relay diagram has its own set of rungs. Back to our panel logic. In the relay panel, you have the brown relays. They are wired up for the logic. Here's what this rung of logic says. This contact reads the state of the coil, CR6, and if CR6 is energized, then this contact is electrically true continuity. The continuity is electrically true. This contact, which is a normally closed, 
this contract reads the state of CR1, and if CR1 is de-energized, then this contact is electrically true continuity. If the coil is de-energized, true if on for the first one, true if off for the second one. Third one's another true if on. This contact reads the state of CR8, and if CR8 is energized, then you have electrically true continuity. Consequently, same thing for CR3. If it's de-energized, then you have true continuity. These two, if CR4 and CR12 are energized, then you have electrical true continuity. Now notice that CR12-1 is a contact that's controlled by CR12. So if CR12 is energized, that closes this contact and bypasses CR4-3. Any logically true path through this set of contacts here will energize CR12. How many possible true paths of electrical true continuity do we have here? Here's the first one. If CR6 is energized and CR1 is de-energized and CR8 is energized, then energize CR12. Or if CR3-1 is closed, meaning if CR3 is de-energized, off, and CR, CR4 is on, energized, then energize CR12. Or if CR3 not energized, if CR3 is de-energized and CR12 is energized, then keep CR12 energized. Okay, now you got a you got a good picture of ladder logic diagrams. What are they? How did they? What was their origin? And you can see it's all really straightforward. It, it evolved out of necessity from relay control, big relay panels, replace the coils of the relays with bits in memory, and replace the queries or the statements, logical statements. Remember, normally open contact on a relay, uh, when you do a relay diagram with row relays, if you use that normally open contact, you're saying that the coil is energized, true or false. If the coil's energized, it's closed, you got continuity. And we went through that in the manuals discussing electrical continuity versus logical continuity. So if you don't understand electrical continuity, I'd get after it before you got too much farther. And uh, next we're going to talk a little bit about building a trainer if you want to use a hardware trainer instead of using the simulator. Personally, I recommend both.